Hey, how's it going? I'm gonna do a quick video talking about how to live stream a musical performance, whether you're singing or singing with a guitar, singing with a piano, like I'll demonstrate in this video, or singing with anything. It could be an entire band, as long as you've got enough inputs to get all the inputs into your audio device and into your computer, you're golden. So this is for people who wanna move beyond just recording their live streaming performance with their iPhone out there or their iPad or whatever phone you've got. It's for people who want it to sound a little bit more pro, um, maybe with effects, maybe with a bit of a compression, maybe with a limiter, maybe with the EQ. Um, so first thing you need to do is gonna open up Soundflower. This is what you're gonna to use to get the audio from your DAW, be that Ableton, Logic, Pro Tools, to your streaming broadcasting software, which is called OBS, which we'll download next. This is Soundflower, it's an open source piece of software um, this lets you root audio digitally inside your computer's workspace. Um, so download Soundflower, you click on this link here. If you have any issues installing Soundflower, it will be because of these paragraphs. Um, it's an open source piece of software, so it means it's got it's a little bit tricky to install, you've got to do a little bit of jiggery pokery, but you will get there in the end, so persevere. If you get any issues, just leave a comment and I'll try and help you on that. So download that, do that. The next piece of software you're gonna to wanna to download is OBS, and this is what you're gonna be using to actually stream onto the internet, so onto YouTube, onto Facebook, onto Instagram, whichever way you're gonna do it. Here is all the, uh, you can download any platform, so just download that. I've already got it, as I said, um, and it's actually running recording this right now. Right, so once you've got all those pieces of software downloaded and installed, you're gonna, we're gonna move on to the Logic Audio Routing part. So the first thing you need to do is go to Audio MIDI Setup. We're gonna create an aggregate device. Okay, I've already created mine, but I'll show you how to do it you need to select your audio interface. So this is whatever your audio is coming into your computer on. So my um, mine is my Onyx Firewire here. Um, so yours could be like a Focusrite, it could be an Apollo. So just select that. Let's go plus down here, create aggregate device. And you're gonna select the aggregate, your audio interface first, and you're gonna select Soundflower to channel. And it's got, at the end here, it's got 19 and 20 are uh, the final outputs. And you need to remember these, these are really important. Okay, in fact, let's just zoom in that so you can see. Yeah, 19 and 20. Um, so once you've done that, I'm gonna name it. I've named mine, as you can see above, Onyx Black Player plus Soundflower, but just name it something good, okay? that's gonna be memorable for you. Okay, so once that's done, next you're gonna to wanna to open up your DAW of choice. So that can be Ableton, Pro Tools, Logic, whatever one you prefer. There's mine opening up here. Get across, here we go, here's Logic. Go Logic X, then Preferences, General, uh, or oh, sorry, Audio, and then you're gonna select whatever aggregate device you created just before with that audio mini itself. So I've got Onyx Blackbird, Soundflower and I've selected it and just click apply changes. So then we wanna create a channel. So let's create a channel. I've got my voice coming in on channel one. Now let's create a keyboard channel, which is my NOR's gonna be coming in on. So that's gonna be in channel five and six. Let's make that stereo. Go to mixer. Let's drag this off of it so we can see a bit more. And we're gonna create three auxiliary tracks. So I'm gonna go one, two, three and you can do that by pressing command n as well if you want to using the shortcut always good to know your shortcuts uh, let's change the input of auxiliary one to bus one and you want to change the input of auxiliary two to bus two the input of auxiliary three to bus two as well okay it's very important that these two are the same let's name auxiliary one mix Let's name auxiliary two monitor. So that's what we're gonna hear the audio on. And let's name auxiliary three sound flower. Now we wanna send all our instruments that we're recording. My, for, for, so for example here, I've got a voice and a keyboard. I'm gonna send all of these to bus one. And then I'm gonna turn up mix one. So that means my audio from my voice and my keyboard is coming into bus one and into the mix. Now you might not be able to hear yourself at this point, so you want to turn up monitor as well. The output of 
mix we want to send to bus 2, okay? The output of monitor is fine, going to stereo output. That will just be going into your, hopefully, your headphones of your audio interface. The output of sound flower, we want to send to our, wherever it was on our audio MIDI setup. So for me, it was output 19 and 20. And we just want to turn that up as well. Now within Logic, we can add any effects we want to. So for example, my voice, it's got a bit of low end on it. So let's just cut that. And um, maybe I want a bit of compression on it as well. So maybe put a bit of compression on it. On our mix bus, we can also add some mastering effects to make the a limiter, which is always good. So that's gonna mean my audio is gonna come through nice and clear and nice and loud all the time. So you can do pretty much anything. You wanna make sure you've got record and monitor mix switched on. So there's the R and the I icons here. If you can't see those, maybe look in your preferences and Google how to get those up, you'll be able to figure it out. Also, in preferences, you wanna make sure you keep um, the latency low. So it's your in and out buffer size. I'm keeping mine around 64. I find this works well at 64. Um, you probably don't wanna go above any one, two, eight, okay? Because then you're gonna get, your audio can be really delayed going into Logic and coming out of Logic. Other thing you need to remember is, the more effects you put on this, the more latency you're gonna cause voice is getting delayed lows that's because you've got too many effects working in logic so let's maybe um i won't demonstrate that now but it'll be blatantly obvious when it happens you don't actually need to press record or anything in logic as long as the audio is coming in your input audio is coming out of soundflower and going to all these channels you're all good right the next thing we need to open up is obs now obviously my obs is running because it's recording this video at the moment so we've got this mad effect of a uh, stream video within a stream at the moment, which is a bit crazy. So you will, this will be blank, it will just be all black. Down here, we are gonna go to plus, and we're gonna create um, our video capture. So that'll be whatever you're using to capture your um, self. For me, it's iOS camera, because I downloaded that app and got it installed at the start. That's why you can see me over here. The next thing you want to do is create an audio input capture. So let's go to audio input capture. Logic X sound flower. So that's going to be the output of Logic X. And the next thing we're going to do is select our sound flower to channel device. Click OK. Great. So now if I zoom out, the my raw audio here is what you've been listening to at the moment is coming in. So, but now over here where I can see all these audio mixes, if I zoom in a little bit on these, you can see the Logic X Soundflower mix is coming through as well. So if I turn down this raw audio, you should still be able to hear me with the Logic X audio. Now let's zoom out again. If I go over to back to Logic again, I can put some more effects on my voice. Um, let's try a bit of echo. And you can see loads of echo on my voice. I could, you could go mad with this. You could put, pretty, get away with putting um, some pitch correction on it. Why don't we try a bit of that? Although that's a bit more um, CPU intensive. So let's, me, where is it? Pitch, pitch, pitch. I'll just use the so C major scale. I'm singing in C major. Let's go back to OBS. Now, a couple of settings you might want to change in OBS before you start live streaming. Um, OBS preferences. You want to set up your streaming here, which I'll do. So whatever you're going to stream on YouTube, uh, Facebook live, blah, blah, blah. You set that up over here and put in the stream key. You can follow the online tutorial. That is actually pretty straightforward. With your output, this is whatever you're gonna, um, I would just leave this pretty much as is. Uh, stream general, that's all fine. Video is a little bit more important. This is your base canvas. So this is how big, how big this black screen is here. So you can change the size of that. I've got mine set to 1920 by 1280p. And then the output scaled is what's going to be streamed. So this I ha this is at 1280 720 because I'm actually just recording a video at the moment. You might want to go a bit lower than that if you're live streaming because 
it, the more you try and upload, it's more dependent on your broadband. You know, lots of other things come into play once you, if you go really big with your output. But yeah, you should have your audio and your video all set up now uh, on your stream. In fact, if I just go back here, I can make this. Let's turn my display off, make this bigger. I've got my audio set up. You can hear my keyboard, so I'm pretty much ready to go and do performance.